Hey Northwest, welcome back to ONW Now. I'm Sean McFarland alongside Lee Volker. On today's show, we have a story about the Royals Parade, a new segment with Corey Eaton and Connor Bigford, word from the halls and a legally blonde preview. Corey and Connor went around North Olathe Northwest looking for pr information to provide the students as well as making it a fun time. Hey guys, we're here with the Connor and Corey show. Uh, we're just in the halls just doing some uh, doing some stuff. So uh, yeah. Let's go see what's what's happening. Hey everybody, it's Corey again. I'm here with Alec. Alec, tell me a little, a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a football player here, and I don't I don't want to talk about it. Okay, so I'm gonna start the timer, and uh, it's gonna go 60 seconds. I'm gonna name a celebrity. You have to draw it the best you can in those okay. 60 seconds. Okay. Got it. Okay. Doctor Phil, go, go. Think about what Doctor Phil has to him. What are his distinct Features. He, he has a mustache. Get the mustache. Oh, God. Okay. Your time's up. All right, so now um, I'm going to take Alec, and we're going to see for to, to win. He's going to win this dollar, okay, Ooh. if someone else can guess what celebrity this is. So come oh, on, Alec. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go. Hey, can you, can you name what celebrity this is? Um, that is clearly going to be Matthew McConaughey. No! God! The mustache was bad! Hey, you, you're smiling. Hey, hey. Hi. Hey, yeah. Can you name what celebrity this is? Um... Justin Bieber! D Donald Trump. No! Oh, you lose. You lose, Alec. Hey, guys. It's Connor here. Uh, we're about to go ask some questions to some people. Let's do this. For Dollar, take a walk in Drew Kider's shoes. Oh, my gosh! Go, go! Excuse me, Drew Barrymore seems down to earth. <laughs> I'm so lost. Drew Barrymore seems down to earth. No. Oh my gosh, she is. She's America's sweetheart. Donald Trump will win the presidency. False. Okay. Bunch of conservatives. Shaba ranks as the greatest recording artist of all time. I would have to agree with that. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Corey and Connor. Now, last week, Luis and I went to the Royals Parade, and we interviewed some students and a teacher about the whole experience and how they felt. Left side, Moustakis, Rivers win the pennant! Last week it was all blue in downtown Kansas City in celebration of the Royals winning the World Series like they did 30 years ago. This season was incredible. It was a bunch of young guys that uh, just, they found every way to win. They never quit. More than 800,000 people gathered for the rally after the parade to hear the players reminisce on their amazing season. It was amazing to see. I think it was 800,000 people around there that showed up. And just Johnny Gomes, on, he was insane and he was so funny. People had our back. It was an amazing moment when Wade Davis threw that last strike to win the World Series. The Royals, 2015 World Champions. Um, when he threw that last strike, Wade Davis, I literally started crying and screaming all at the same time. My parents were like, ah, okay, and I was like bawling and I'm emotional. Jumping out of the couch and screaming and yelling up and down. It's been 30 years since the Royals were last crowned world champions. Mr. McRoberts has been a longtime fan. You're talking to somebody that went to the very first Royals game ever in Royal Stadium. I watched the 71 World Series in its entirety, you know, in, in which the Pirates won. But man, to have the Royals win, it's just for your city. It's just fantastic. Though the Royals face a difficult offseason with some of their best players maybe leaving, we know one thing. The Royals fans will stand behind them all the way. This has been Luis Ruiz. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Luis and Sean. It looks like a great time. I can't believe there are over 800,000 people there. With the school musical around the corner, Lee went behind the scenes and interviewed students about Legally Blonde. Last year, the theater department put on The Wizard of Oz, which was a huge success. This year, Legally Blonde is aiming to be even greater. I'm really excited about doing a contemporary piece. I really hope everybody comes to see it. We have had sold out nights the last two years. We unfortunately had to turn people away from Wizard of Oz. Legally Blonde is a fun and energetic musical that can be enjoyed by all audiences. 
Oh, everybody loves this show. Um, it's very popular, as you know, from the movie and from the musical that was on Broadway. The music is great. The story is great. The cast has been working hard and will continue to do so for the November play showings. Mary Ann Traxler will play Elle Woods in the production. Having the lead is so far so good. Um, I think that there's going to be stress, um, but I love the show so much and love the role so much that it kind of is very natural. With rehearsal comes plenty of challenges for the cast. Some of the challenges that come with acting are probably learning to play a part the right way, kind of experimenting. It's definitely because you have to find what fits you. Rehearsal can get off track, but the cast knows when to crack down and get to it. We stay on task um, enough to get things done. You know, we, we stay on task because the fun of the show is the show. Like the fun of rehearsals is what we're doing working on the show. Once it gets to work, the cast is able to do amazing things. So dedicated. They work so hard and they have so much extra work they have to do at home, on their own, on the weekends. I mean, they're constantly practicing their lines and and their scene work and their blocking and their songs. With all this hard work, this year's musical is on track to become one of the best yet. My greatest hope for Legally Blonde is probably just full satisfaction of the cast and the audience. And I think that we all have a lot of anticipation um, for what the show's gonna be, and I definitely want the audience to leave saying that was insane. Legally Blonde will be shown November 19th, 20th, and 21st. In addition to that, a public matinee will be held on Saturday, November 21st at 2 p.m. I want everybody to come see Legally Blonde. We're really, really, really excited about it, and we're already putting so much work into the show, and having everybody come see it is just gonna make it that much more fulfilling. For ONW Now, this has been Lee Volker. Now back to the desk. Remember to go and watch the musical, Ravens. Opening night is November 19th and goes through the 21st. And now we have a new edition of The Word from the Halls from, with Riley and Brooke. Are you Kansas City Royals? Um, Royals. Kansas City Royals. 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 <laughs> Royals. Royals. 87? 1985. 1985. 1985. 2015. But before that, 1985. What is, it, what is it, the mascot of the Royals? A crown? Uh, I don't know. Mr. Royal. Slugger. I don't watch sports that much. <laughs> um, uh, Slugger. 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 Uh, Salvi, because you can't understand a word he's saying. Moose. Uh, Hosmer. Eric Hosmer. Hosmer. Eric Hosmer. 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 Eric Hosmer. 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 He has my swag. Thanks, guys. And for our final athlete of the week for fall sports, it is none other than Tess Reed. Brooke has the story. Tess Street is not only our Athlete of the Week, but also the Athlete of the Fall. She's a two-time All-League and All-State player. She talks about how much Coach Linth and Coach Sykes have impacted her throughout her volleyball career. Um, Coach Linth and Coach Sykes have both done a, an incredible job with this team and this program. I, I can't thank them enough. They completely turn the thing around and um, keep us working hard, keep us humble, keep us uh, honorable, which is really nice. So. I just thank them for everything they've done. Throughout this season, the ONW volleyball team has impacted her greatly. I knew we were going to have a really strong team. We have incredible players. I am still perplexed by how we got so many great players. Deal, we have a lot of talent, and uh, I don't think we c I can ever match that. <laughs> Overall, Tess ended with breaking four school records and was honored for being best player and having remarkable leadership. Congrats to Tess for her honor. <laughs> Thanks, Brooke. And now let's take it to Jacob Downing, who talks about Battle of the Brains. I'm Jacob Downing, and I'm here with Namita Kolkarni, who is a senior in A&E. Her capstone group has recently been selected as a top 20 finalist for the Battle of the Brains competition through Science Cities. What does being a top 20 finalist entail? So, since we have been chosen out of 520 schools for the top 20, now we get two things. So, first, if we win the competition, we get $50,000 donated to our school, which is O&W, and we get our exhibit built at Science City. So right now, all we need is for the public to vote. And now that you've been chosen, how does the public get involved? 
So the public can go vote either online or using a QR code that we've created. You can go online and vote every day in a 24-hour period with all the emails that you have. Um, create many different emails as possible. We need the public vote as much. So just vote every day with any email. Don't forget to go out and do your part and vote. Your cans, be sure to donate below. Thanks. I'm That's Jacob all we have for this week, Ravens. Be sure to come out to Cantuity tonight. For Lee Volker, I'm Sean McFarland. Thanks for watching, Ravens. See you next week. Finalists for the Battle of the Brains competition through Science City.